Richard here from Sharpshooting UK. I'm shooting another video about quick load quite quickly because I had an interesting um, email from um, someone who, who watched the videos, um, a subscriber who uh, I'm in contact with, and he asked a question that was exactly the type of thing I'm trying to explain quick load is so handy for. He says, could you run the figures for me? I've got a load in my 22250 using 69 grain tipped match kings. I'm doing X and Y speed with X and Y powder. Do you think I can go higher? I think there might be a higher node, but I'm anxious about the pressures. And if I'm going to do that, what powder? So there you have it. You've got a load that's been worked up in a gun, but it feels a bit mild. The chap's concerned about getting it to the next highest node, getting a bit more speed, um, but wants to make sure that that's safe and also which powder will burn completely in his 23 inch barrel. So I'm going to run you through the figures as he's given them to me. And I'm also going to show you um, a little bit of tuning, the sort of first and most useful step in um, tuning these, um, these figures from the defaults that are provided by the program. Now in question is 22250. Sammy, normal 22250. Okay, there we have it. We've already got the Sierra um, bullet file open, so we don't need to change that. We just need to go to the 69 grain 224 tipped match key. Now, he's currently using. He is currently using Elko 17 37.4 grains and he has a 23 inch barrel that's over here on the left under the cartridge side of things. Okay, so we can see here, guys, I've put in his current load at normal lengths. And we can see that it's, it's pretty hot, 62K here. Now, this is where the tuning comes in. I've said that given that it's more than a ballpark we're looking for here, we're looking to really sort of fine tune um, his load here. Um, I've asked him for two things that make a significant difference to the accuracy of quick load. One is the cartridge length. Like my 223 AI in the original video that I did, 22250 is uh, the same. You can have different throats and use very long um, fast twist bullets like the um, 70s, 75s, 80s, 90s even, or it could be throated for 40s. So it's quite a variable, and indeed, his cartridge length, instead of 2.3, is much longer. It is 2.61. So that's going to really change the internal pressures. So I'm going to change that. We've got his barrel length. Okay, that's looking good. The second thing I've asked him to clarify, which again makes a difference to the internal pressures, is by right, the 22250 should have 43.5 grains of H2O capacity. That is the maximum amount of, well it's the internal volume, isn't it? Now, it varies quite a lot with each manufacturer's brass, etc, etc. It really does vary, and it can vary to such a degree that it makes a difference to the calculations. So, what you do is you get a sized case that is after all what you're going to be firing pop a primer back in it i just use an old one just pop it back in so it's watertight and then weigh that now in this instance i've asked this friend of mine to do this 
and that weight is 164 grains. You then fill that empty case with water right to the top and the weight of the water is this measurement here. Maximum case capacity overflow. Okay, to overflowing. That's the volume and it's measured by the weight of water that you can get in to the brim. And in his instance, water to the brim is 210 grains. So he's got 36, 46 grains of capacity. Now that's a lot more than this basic spec here. Okay, so let's change here 43.49 to 46. This is going to really quite alter these figures. As a matter of interest, having put this in, you can now save this um, so that you don't have to do this again next time you fire the program up for one of your one of your guns. But we'll get to that. So we've put his overall length in with his um, 69 TMKs. We've put a much more accurate case capacity in. And his current load, this is unbelievably accurate, this, 37.4 his current load is. Okay, now he told me that he was getting chronographed 32.65. And look what quick load says, 32.57. That's just remarkable. And you'll notice that at the default settings, this load gave 63k, which was getting onto a top. Given that we've tuned it to his gun accurately with the longer case length and the bigger case volume, that has lowered the pressures, and he's quite right. He is getting 32.57 exactly as predicted, but look, his pressures with his Elko are at 48k. So he could probably go up to the next accuracy node, which is likely about, about a grain up. Um, it tends to be about 3% between nodes, so... You know, well, we'll have a look now. If we go to our plus minus like we did yesterday on the toolbar here, that tells us what this powder plus and minus does in detail. So we'll hit our plus minus. Here's our powder. Bear in mind that the 3257 predicted is exactly what he's actually getting over the chronic. If he goes up, his Pmax here, well, he can go up quite a lot. He can go up quite a lot. We've got 65k on offer here. If he goes up to 39 grains, so that's two more grains, he's going to get 160 feet per second more. 100% burnt. And he's still got pressure to spare. So using this same powder, I can confidently say to him, you can load up. You can go up. You can do another another test, you know, up another grain or so with ease and hope to reach another accuracy node. Probably could be getting on for 200 feet per second faster. Now, if... If he had to change powder, I would know by these factors. Obviously, you can't change barrel length. That, that's fixed. If this fill here, okay, was about, a, say, 105% now, there's no way he's going to get enough in the case to go to the next accuracy node. But because he's got enough room and his current charge is only 90% filled, and... 99.3% of it is burning. We are on the right powder here for him to go up another node. It's obviously stable for him and accurate because that's why he's currently using it. So there's no point to mess about changing powder, buying more stuff. He can, I can simply say to him, right, stick to that same powder and up you go. So let's put here manually uh, about another grain in. Let's go to 38.5. And you can see now we've won 
quite a bit of speed, 100, 100 feet per second. We're still burning it all. We're still okay for pressure. And we're still okay for fill. If we look at our chart here, which is updated with the um, increased bottom line that I've put in on charge weight, this, this chart has updated itself. You can see here that as we get towards 98% fill, which is sort of bottom of the neck, 40 grains, that's three grains more than he's currently loading. We're up to 3,500 feet per second from 3,250. So he's talking about major room yet and was still below his Pmax. So I can now feed back to him that in quick load, uh, which is very accurate with the um, specs that he's, um, he's given us, um, it's within you know five feet per second of, of of what he's actually recording, which is you know always impressive. I think that he could go up three grains here, forty point four. He's currently on thirty seven point four. He could go up three grains and still be below his pressure max, which is sixty five k. And he will gain two hundred and sixty feet per second. So, in answer to his question, which powder do I need to go looking for the next highest accuracy node, the next fastest accuracy node, uh, the answer is the same powder. It will all burn and it will fit in the case. Um, as to how high he should be going before Pmax, I think that we can safely predict that he can go up rather a lot um, in the order of three grains. Um, and obviously, I will advise him to take caution because, you know, it is a computer simulation and, you know, you, you, you build up to these things, don't you? But um, he doesn't need to worry that if he puts half a grain more in his case, he's going to blow the bolt back. We're talking about going up three whole grains of, of the Elko 17 before we get anywhere near the pressure ceiling. So you could see how I couldn't have guessed that. When he says to me, what do you think? Do you think I can go higher? It's a bit of a chin scratcher. Whereas with this, and you've seen how accurate it was with his data, once we put in the accurate case dimensions, which was not the end of the world, once you've measured it, you know it's done, you can see that it gives you really empowering information and frankly helps you make safer decisions and take some of the guesswork, if not all of the guesswork, out of such difficult questions you know what powder will it burn you know what's safe so um it's a good example for you guys that's why i'm putting it out out there straight away um i think this program is just genius i absolutely um find it the the most useful thing so there we go i, I hope you found that follow-up video helpful and um I, I do recommend quick load definitely but as soon as you get it get one of your cases size it, put a primer in it so that it's sealed, weigh it, fill it with water to the top, weigh that, the difference between the two is this measurement here, it's the volume of the case, maximum case capacity overflow to overflow, and that can be 10% away from what it should be, and that makes a massive difference to the internal pressures. Likewise, the cartridge length. If you're loading long, it's going to leave more powder room and that decreases the pressure a lot. So get those two little bits of tuning in and uh, you're going to get staggeringly accurate figures. So there we go. Hope that's useful, chaps. Bye for now.